Hello. So this video, I want to clarify a point that I kind of hinted at in an earlier video about AI and learning that I think kind of bears mentioning in terms of learning to pursue mastery. And this is in response to a YouTube comment that I got, or rather a YouTube message from an anonymous person who said, um, you talked about how AI and freeze trained the whole thing at once, and this is extremely confusing because from all the research about deliberate practice I read, this doesn't seem to make sense. Could you clarify this aspect more? How do I practice the whole thing at once while still making sure I'm not mixing too many things at once, having a quality practice? Okay, so I wanted to spend a whole episode on this, and I think I can try to cover it in five minutes so that you're in here and out as fast as possible. So, first of all, this is a mixture of science knowledge, complete anecdotes, hypotheses, guesses, and conjectures about what I understand in terms of performance and where I see AI going and what I've observed from AI uh, at the current moment. So this is a little bit of a future think kind of episode. So if you agree with me, that's awesome. Hop on board. Otherwise, you know, this isn't obviously, I mean, almost everything that I post here is, uh, is, is opinion, not scientific fact, as as you could say, but I try to back it up with as much research as I possibly can. Um, but of course, it's all my own perspective, so I can't guarantee anything in terms of that. So with that kind of like asterisk out of the way, let's go on to talk about AI and learning and performance. So this all came about in February when I watched Google unveil their DeepMind learning, where they had taught their systems, uh, AI systems, to learn to play video games. And they showed a bunch of YouTube videos of these systems learning to play video games. And I observed a behavior that I think is worth talking about. And that behavior, I'll link the video down below, by the way, that behavior is that quite rapidly in the mastery process, the machine learned what the optimal strategy for the game was and then began to pursue that strategy at the expense of developing basic skills. So just to paint the picture, the game was the one where you have a bunch of blocks at the top and you have a pad at the bottom and a ball that's bouncing and you have to place the pad under the ball like before it falls through and, and goes past the field of play. And so you have to bounce it back up towards the top and try to break the blocks. Now, a typical human learning this would start with the fundamentals get the pad under the block at all costs. Okay, that's the fundamental skill. Then you learn to aim the ball. And you try to aim it at the blocks you want. Then you get a specific kind of strategy like, you know, shooting it up into the corner and ricocheting it around in the top. Okay, so this is the typical pyramid scheme for learning an advanced skill. And it has to do with learning a basic skill, then getting better at it, or then, then layering on another skill, and then layering on a third skill. And the machine more or less did this, but they more rapidly moved to the higher order skill when they had not yet mastered the lower order skill. And I think that there was this one moment when it was trying to aim the ball like into the correct location, and it hadn't yet mastered some of the basic skills like moving the thing around to the right position. So it looked like a complete novice because the ball just kind of like went right by the the paddle like a little bit away and the paddle was just sitting there not even moving because the machine was not trying to do the basic skill get the paddle under the ball the machine was trying to get the paddle under the ball aiming the ball into the correct place for the optimal strategy quite early on in the training process and i think that this is a more rapid way to approach mastery than the pyramid approach. I think that humans spend a lot of time kind of pyramiding up our skills, and here's what happens. Let's say you have a basic skill like passing a soccer ball, and you start by learning the skill by kicking the soccer ball against the wall um, in a gym with, with gym shoes on, okay? So you do this over and over and over again, and you learn to do it pretty well. Then let's say you next level it. So you start to do this outside against a wall in the grass with soccer shoes on. Essentially, what you have to do is relearn your skill. You have to erase 
some of the neurons that you used to learn that skill and relearn a better version of it that is closer to the perfect pass than you did before. So you, although you gained some ground by training it inside over and over again, you actually lost some ground because you have to unlearn certain motor movements that you learned that were not optimal, that were not part of the perfect pass and relearn them. Then let's say that you get this pass and you start doing it with another person and you just kick the ball back and forth and pass and pass and pass. So now you're also learning to receive from a person as well as pass it back. So again, you have to unlearn some certain skills and relearn the perfect pass motor movements slightly better than you had before. And then finally you start doing this in game and whoa, everything changes. And once again, you have to unlearn a bunch of stuff in order to relearn a better version of the pass that works in a game. So you can see that doing the pyramid scheme allows you to condense your training into drills, which I promote a lot. But then why why am I now talking about doing this holistic training? Well, I, I am of the belief that this holistic training allows you to bypass the need to unlearn over and over again bad habits that you've ingrained into your motor movements as you've been training up these skills. So... What this looks like in in eSport is actually quite interesting because we don't have the capability so much because of sandbox mode not existing. We don't have the capability so much of running drills outside of scrimmage environments. So we are all the time kind of practicing our skills native, like in in the actual games. And But I think that there's this move to do things like practice CSing alone in a bot game. And I think that actually... I am a huge fan of drills, and I think that they really have their place in places like warm-up and in places where they create a kind of focused training that could allow for rapid development of a new skill. But that doesn't mesh very well with my understanding of of this, this concept that like you need to train CSing in a lane while you are trying to trade with the other person and watching for jungler ganks, because that skill is the skill you actually need to be, you know, a master's tier player or a challenger tier player. You don't need the skill to CS in a bot game. You need the skill to CS while trading, while positioning yourself, while watching for jungle ganks, and while communicating with your team. Okay, that is the actual skill that you need. And it's composed of all of these parts that you might more rapidly obtain if you were practicing the actual skill the whole time instead of drilling in a bot game. So the takeaway here, I think, is that I have had the most success in climbing the ladder and improving my League of Legends ranking when I went into a match in ranked, so I kind of stay away from normals mostly, and I drilled as much as I could a very specific action, but I did it kind of in the Petri dish, uh, sorry, not the Petri dish, in the native environment. So in the environment where I had to account for all the other variables. And I tried to account for all the other variables as I was drilling this basic skill over and over and over again. And I think that drills that kind of mimic that structure, even if we get a sandbox mode, we're going to run drills, those drills should as much as possible mimic the competitive environment because That means that they're readily applicable to the competitive environment and you have very little unlearning to do as you're building up your uh, repertoire, I would say, of motor movements in your brain of like what is ideal and not. So that's kind of my explanation of what I meant about AI and learning. Remember that the, the main skill of an elite athlete is learning. That is the thing that makes them an elite athlete and kind of grows them to be a champion. You have to learn, uh, faster and you have to unlearn and relearn and you have to learn better than than anybody else your body has to learn it i don't mean like so much memorizing but i mean you have to train your motor neurons you have to train your heart you have to train your muscles and condition them to obey you in ways that you know push past the limits of fatigue and uh that that allow you to execute like very very amazing motor reflexes in response to a perceptual stimuli that you learned to to pattern recognition on So 
learning, 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 learning. That is the the big thing that I'm going to push kind of like in this episode and, and in other future episodes. Anything that you can do to bring up your focus, to understand how it is that you learn, and to kind of structure an environment where you're going to be learning the skill that you need to learn while exposing yourself to you know, as much stimuli as possible. I think that that is, that is the fastest way to go from zero to 60 miles an hour in, in any sport. This, so I think, applies very well to DOTA and to CSGO. So yeah, let me know what you think about my theories. And I'm just really curious if, if you've seen this video and what you think about the future of AI. I mean, I have a ton of opinions about AI, but I would have to do it in a podcast, some sort of longer form format, because it's just not enough time to handle it in one of these little mind games tv episodes so i will see you guys next time what the fuck say ning 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 ning